the one and only Dr. Sunil Jindal uh, to deal uh, on the management of this vexing problem of erectile dysfunction. Jindal sir, uh, welcome to this meeting. Jindal sir is a chief consultant, laparoscopic surgeon and andrologist and reproductive medicine specialist of Jindal Hospital. He is a scientific director of Dr. Madhu Jindal Memorial Test Tube Baby Center at Meerut, vice chairperson of Delhi ISAR and Delhi IAG chapters in eight textbooks on infertility. Most importantly, a wonderful speaker and a great communicator. Over to you, sir, for your talk on erectile dysfunction management. Thank you so much, Dr. Venugopal. Thank you so much for introducing me so kindly. And let me be honest with you. Thank you, all the audience, for being here on a Sunday afternoon. And I hope I'll be able to make these 15 minutes valuable for you because on this subject, I can speak hours and hours, but I've tried to condense it exactly into 15 minutes to give you a fair idea of what needs to be understood by every gynecologist about erectile dysfunction. We all know one thing for sure, that 43% of women and 37% of men have a sexual disorder. So this is the biggest disorder ever in the world. Unfortunately, nobody talks about it. And with men, erectile dysfunction so beautifully explained by my previous uh, speaker, uh, the evaluation, I would just like to go on to a few salient things which I think are very important for us to understand. Just a minute, I'll just... So if we go on to a few very important things, a few extremely important things for all of us to understand is that sexual dysfunction is a common condition among men and it gets worsened with stress of infertility. See what happens with us is that as fertility specialists, we get so many men who don't have children and this gets worsened up. So it's important as a fertility specialist or a gynecologist when so many men come to us to ask about the erectile function. Uh, men are weird creatures, weird creatures because of the reason that male is a gender which has a reputation of being extremely logical, stable, unemotional, except when it comes to sex. And the crazy thing which happens with most men is, Oscar Wilde said something beautifully, I can resist everything except temptation. So now what happens? Whenever a man has erectile dysfunction, he rushes to the doctor because he wants to get over with it. And when a woman has sexual dysfunction, she normally tries to avoid, especially the, in the pain dysfunction, because at any cost, she just does not want to, just does not want to go to the doctor because the pain of getting treated is more than the pleasure of having sex for her. So as far as a man is concerned, Dr. Alok had so beautifully explained to us that the erection is like a sink, the bung gets closed, blood gets filled, the erection happens. So now let us understand that most of the pharmacotherapy which we have here is such that it relaxes the cavernosa so that blood fills in. And when it relaxes the cavernosa, what happens is that the blood fills in, the tunica gets compressed and the venous outflow gets compressed. So you can have an erectile problem in two problems, either blood is not entering or the venous outflow is existing. So in case you have an input problem or you have an output problem. So depending on this, let us understand that when about 52% is the prevalence, uh, I'll just go on right away to this. Lab investigations, well, a fasting glucose is very much needed, lipid profile is needed, hormonal profile is needed. And we all know that if a man comes to us after 40 years with erectile dysfunction, the chances of this man having a cardiac event is four times the normal population, in fact, 30% in the next three years. And we also know one thing for sure, it's very important to detect this. Do we know that post-COVID, erectile dysfunction has increased 
six times when we are keeping the age into consideration in men. A paper of this has been uh, released in April 2021. And this is a major subset of patients who can go in for a cardiac problem. And therefore, it is important that post-COVID, in case a man has erectile dysfunction, we need to evaluate these patients for the cardiac problem. Now, let us come to, I will not go into the whole story of this, but let us understand that a duplex scanning or what is known as a penile Doppler becomes a very important thing for us to do. And I'll just show you over here what is done in a penile Doppler in this video, because it's, it's very self-explanatory. The basis would be understood. You can see the two cavernosa over here and the spongiosum. I think the main video is not here. Anyway, what we do in this is that we inject papaverin and chlorpromazine or cavarject, which is phosphodiesterase. And when we inject prostaglandins into this, there is a dilatation which takes place. And we like to see the blood flow, which was before and after. And in case the peak systolic velocity is above 25 and it is maintained for a period of about 30 seconds to three minutes, we know that the person does not have an organic erectile dysfunction. So when you must have heard so many times that the man says, I'm impotent, so I could not have raped. So normally these people get a penile Doppler done so that you could check if this person has an organic erectile dysfunction or not. Now, so what are the aims of therapy? I'm coming back to the therapy. It is number one, improving the libido. And the second is addressing two sexual functions, the capacity to acquire a sustained penile erection and to see that it lasts and there is not a premature ejaculation. So I'm going to speak about erectile dysfunction very simply, you could keep it into three lines of treatment. The first line of treatment would be medication, the phosphodiesterase inhibitors, in which the most common one is sildenafil. It could be vacuum constriction devices, which are very honestly used for a long time. And there is, of course, sex therapy as cognitive behavior, uh, co co cognitive therapy and behavioral therapy. Now let's understand very simply a few things about it. So when a patient comes to you, the evaluation form as has been told by Dr. Alok has been given to him. You need to at that time distinguish between two things, erectile dysfunction and premature ejaculation. A lot of times people who have premature ejaculation confuse it with erectile dysfunction. In fact, a correct history of did you ejaculate at the time when there was detumescence of your penis is important. The second important thing for us to understand is when you take a history of the patient, you understand what kind of a treatment you need to give for them. Now, the second line of treatment would be that you have given these patients sildenafil, and it's not working. And then you would need to take up these patients for the second lies, which is intraurethral suppositories, which unfortunately are not available now in the country. But what you do for these patients is injection therapy. Now I'll share something very interesting with you. Uh, it was 1990, 1992. And in Molana Azad Medical College where I did my post-graduation and my registrar job from. Over there, there was a department of andrology. And in this department, they used to treat erectile dysfunction. So the treatment of erectile dysfunction in those days used to be papaverine injection. Sildenafil was not there. So either you had vitamin C, which you used to give to the patient and tell them to suck the tablet. And in case for khatti lagti hai, it means ki tumhara erection hoga for psychogenic. Or you had, for all these patients, something interesting, the papaverine injection. But because of the systems which were there in the hospital and the uh, stress of priapism, intrapenile injections were not given to the patients. So what used to happen is that you had to inject the intrapenile injection in the hospital and tell him to go home. So there used to be a time. The time used to be from 2 o'clock to 2.20 when all the buses used to come to the terminus. That all these men used to be waiting in a line then we had to inject these people and tell them, wear your lungi and rush. Wear your lungi and rush. It used to be a crazy story. 
But the erections of papaverine were phenomenal. And even now when patients whom I give uh, sidenophil, it doesn't work, in a majority of them, papaverine with chlorpromazine, or if you give Caverject injection, that becomes very expensive. So not many people can afford. If you give them, it gives sustained good erections, which are really great for these patients. So this would be the second line. And the third line would be penile prostheses, which are of two types, uh, semi-rigid and an inflatable. A semi-rigid is the kind which has been actually very popular for a long time because it is very cheap, can be used in the country. And in fact, it is the Dr. Rupin Shah prosthesis which is used. And the other is inflatable, where there is a bladder which is filled up by saline by the click of a button. And the button is placed in the scrotum. So it's an important and an interesting thing to have by that fashion. So this is what you could do. Now I'll just talk about uh, Sidnafil a bit so that in case you prescribe Sidnafil, you should be having a few things and a few ideas about the Sidnafil. So the most important thing once again, as we have seen is that based on the values and priorities. Now you have a few men who say that I am 65, I do not want to have it, but my wife always wants to have it. What can I do? And I will not take any medication. These are the people who could be given a vacuum device and it works very well with them. So you have to first start them on PDE5s give a vacuum device to a few people. And in case this works, great. If it does not work, you bring them onto intracavernosal injections. In about 80 to 90% of people, these three things would work. You assess the outcomes. You've got to ask for the satisfaction of the man as well as the woman. And if it is there, Great. If it is not there, if there is inadequate efficacy or unacceptable adverse effects, insufficient satisfaction, then you need to adjust the dose of Sidnafil. You uh, would like them to revisit, to go on further. And there may be some psychosocial barriers which needs to be removed. So <clears throat> let's come to Sidnafil, um, PDE5s. So PDE5s can be Sidnafil. Vardenafil, Tadalafil, Avanafil. And in this series, the difference between Sidnafil and Tadalafil, which is available in our country very freely, is number one, the half-life, and number two, the onset of action. So if there is a man who needs it regularly, which means if he's there with his wife or regular partner, and it is not that he needs to eat a tablet to go ahead and have intercourse, then Tadalafil is the drug because the half-life of Tadalafil is about 36 hours. So he could be on regular Tadalafil for that matter so that whenever he wants an erection, he can get an erection and he could have intercourse. But in a lot of people who actually want it on demand, in those cases, Sidnafil becomes a very useful drug. Sometimes what also we do is that supposing you've given Tadalafil to a man and he does not have any side effects and there is no headache. In these men, in case he is not able to have intercourse with Tadalafil, then you could add on demand Sidnafil with the ongoing Tadalafil. That is the other methodology which can be used in them. Uh, they're very safe. There normally is not a problem, except for people who are taking nitrate therapy. Uh, there is insufficient evidence to support the superiority of any of these. However, they need to be given as per the demand of the patients. And the European guidelines suggest that the short, the choice of drugs, um, short versus long acting depends on the frequency of the intercourse, occasional use versus regular therapy, as I'm talking to you about, three to four times weekly, and the patient's personal experiences. Uh, you give the drugs based on that. So PDE5 inhibitors, now a few things to be understood. They produce natural erectile response to sexual stimulation by enhancing relaxant effect of nitric oxide on corporal cavernosa. In case the man does not 
have a sexual stimulation, this drug will not work. So it is not an aphrodisiac. So the man has to understand it is not an aphrodisiac. The mood needs to be made. And only when the mood will be made, will it work. Therefore, it is most important that the partner should be explained that when you are being given this drug, you need to work on to make the mood. In fact, I give therapy to both the partners for about five to 10 minutes. Whenever I prescribe Sidnafil, where I would tell the wife that this is a combined job. You've got to get a made mood. You've got to put in the responses. Four player needs to be there. See, it's, it's just like, please understand. In India, the problem is that sex means that you take the car from the first gear immediately into the fourth gear. You need to make them understand that sex is so beautiful. It needs to go on slow. And the desire will never be made by signifying. It has to go from the first gear to the second gear, from the second to the third, and then to enjoy the fourth gear. Number one. Number two, this is a drug which needs to be given about one and a half hours before intercourse, which means if somebody thinks that that person is going to take Sidnafil, pop in the tablet and go ahead, it will not work. So between one and a half hours to half an hour, a tablet of Sidnafil needs to be given. We also need to understand that it has very few side effects. Most of the patients who suggest side effects would be like headache. If they have side effects with Sidnafil, give them to Dalafil. If they have still side effects, decrease the dose, it will function. Uh, I, this is just to tell you what exactly happens is nitric oxide acts on the guanylate cyclase, GTP produces GMP, leads to relaxation. Now what happens is this gets cyclic GMP gets degraded to GMP, PDE5, which does it gets inhibited by um, the drug, uh, which means Sidnafil, as a result of which cycling GMP increases and there is a relaxation. Intracavernosal drugs I've told you about need to be injected into the cavernosa. Patients inject them themselves and have great intercourse, great erections. This is a very useful drug in Sidnafil failures. Testosterone needs to be checked in case the testosterone is less. You need to give testosterone in the form of gel today, which is available. It enhances the libido. And also remember, in a low testosterone person, Sidnafil does not act so well. And the low dosage of Sidnafil, uh, testosterone is so common. If you check testosterone in men a, more than 45 years of age, a large majority of them are low in testosterone. And they talk about mood swings. They say, we don't feel like it. There is no energy. And the reason is low testosterone. So testosterone needs to be replaced. And I'm thankful very much. I just wanted to put in a few points. Thank you very much, the Kerala Society, for inviting me. And just a few facts, because these are interesting. Most men who say they have ED actually do not have ED. Penises are fragile. People do not realize they can be fractures. Erections happen early in life, even in very young children, neonates. Medication for EDs does not always work. Shorter penises at times have bigger erections. The average erection is 5.6 inches. This is very important because a lot of my patients come to me and they have normal size penises and they say they have very small penises. They have used all the oils available in the world, but still they just need to be told that the erection size is 5.6 inches and the normal size for an intercourse is three to five minutes. So if they have discharged in five minutes, it's not premature ejaculation. The world's largest erection um, people see nowadays a lot of training has gone on to the pornographic literature and movies. So they need to be understood. Please do not get disheartened. Please do not have a bad heart. The largest erection is 13.5 inches. ED can signal serious health problems, especially cardiac problems. Normal duration I have spoken to you about. Modern andrology can cure nearly all patients with impotence and most important, 
Remember, a person may be born with ED, but need not die with one. And thank you very much. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you very much, sir, for that excellent talk and uh, made a post-lunch session so much uh, interesting and informative. I think only you could have done that. Uh, I think we'll go ahead with the next talk and uh, uh, Dr. Baha.